What's up, my ninjas? Okay. DC's had a lot of shit movies in the past. Not including, like, their animated stuff, because most of that's actually pretty awesome. It would seem that, in my opinion, Marvel makes superior live action, while DC makes superior animated. But that's just my opinion. With the introduction of the Man of Steel back in 2013, it finally seemed like DC was trying to bring the caliber of their movies up to par with Marvel's, whom, by this time, was killing it with their established shared universe. And that is awesome for us. While I appreciate the effort going into these new movies, I have to say I am pretty irritated about some of the casting choices. Now, originally, I was going to do a video on all the casting for the uh, Justice League movie at once, but I have far too many complaints to do it all in a video under, like, 60 minutes. So, I'm going to do individual characters. And no, I don't have a problem with Ben Affleck being Batman. Yes, Affleck is still an ass bag, but he hasn't done anything to tarnish Batman's rep like some of the other poorly cast actors chosen to portray him. So, in the spirit of putting your best foot forward and going hard in the paint, we will first discuss my issues with the Justice League's most iconic founding member. Aquaman. <laughs> Arthur Curry, AKA Aquaman, is the most iconic Justice League member because despite having legit superpowers, He's arguably the most useless member of the team. So useless, in fact, that he is consistently the butt of so many superhero jokes across different media. Tell you what, Google Aquaman memes and uh, see what comes up. Like, I didn't even do this myself for research uh, for this video. That's how confident I am that Nearly every meme that you find will be something derogatory about his fish powers. Go ahead. Oh, wait. What I tell you? Right here on the ocean floor. By the way, as it turns out, Originally, he isn't even really Atlantean and had to learn to breathe underwater with training and science. His dad was a scientist or oceanographer or something like that who found and got stuck in Atlantis and knocked up a native Atlantean broad. Later, after the king of Atlantis died, Arthur Curry was voted to be the new king. So, saying Arthur Curry is Atlantean is like saying... Barack Obama, Holly Berry, and Lenny Kravitz are black. Aquaman debuted in 1941, but it wasn't until 1985, after the Crisis on Infinite Earths series, that they realized Aquaman is a gigantic ocean pussy. So, they began making moves to beef him up. Now, anyone who watched the Super Friends growing up will never believe Aquaman to be anything other than this guy. Aquaman! But this didn't stop DC from trying anyway. First, they changed his name and backstory a little bit to say that he was born as Orin rather than Arthur Curry to the then Atlantean queen and uh, some wizard thereby giving him an actual blood claim to the throne and uh, magical aptitude. He was left as a baby on the surface to die because he had blonde hair, which is a bad omen in Atlantis. Side note, new Aquaman doesn't have blonde hair, but he does have white eyes. Bet money that those albino white eyes are considered a bad omen in this new movie series. Bet money. 
Anyway, so he was a feral baby uh, who only had fish to keep him company until some dude who owned a lighthouse whose name was Arthur Curry found him and adopted him, naming him after himself. By the way, what the fuck? Oh shit, I found a baby in the wild. Oh, I guess I'll kidnap it and name it after myself. Who the fuck does that shit? Despite this darker origin, we still saw him as this guy. Right here on the ocean floor. In 1994, uh, he was given a new series and a new shirtless feral gladiator look that he adopted from the temporary insanity from having his left hand eaten off by piranhas. This look came complete with uh, an unkempt beard and a harpoon hook hand prosthetic like a fucking Disney pirate. But again, we still saw this guy. Aquaman. DC, I guess, finally realized how much more ridiculous they were making Arthur look. So they gave him a new magical prosthetic hand that can morph into a harpoon hook on a draw cord, effectively making him underwater scorpion. Get over here. Under the sea. After the failed attempts to make Aquaman relevant through redesigns and tweaking his origin story, DC decided to try to give him impossible street cred in order to get us to stop seeing him as this guy. My ability to talk with fish is of no help, Wonder Woman. I take personal issue with this because uh, it's got him getting the upper hand in fights that he wouldn't even stand a chance in. Here's a picture of Aquaman kicking Superman's butt, which isn't as far-fetched as it might sound considering Superman is weak to magic and Arthur is half wizard. But where I take issue uh, is when DC shot themselves in the dick by giving licensing rights to Netherrealm to make the Mortal Kombat style DC games. Uh, Mortal Kombat was fun when I was a kid but only because I didn't know how broken and unbalanced it really was as a fighting game with all its fucked up Asian stereotypes. If they were serious about making a respectable fighting game title, they should have gone to like Namco or Capcom or shit, even SNK. I'll make a video on that later. In the game Injustice Gods Among Us, in the main storyline, Aquaman is said to have defeated both alternate versions of Flash and Captain Marvel. Let me go ahead and stop you right there. I will never refer to Billy Batson's alter ego as Shazam because it's not his fucking name. Captain Marvel has been shit on by both Marvel Comics and DC ever since the 40s. Don't worry, I'll make a video on that soon too. There is no fucking way Aquaman could ever, on any plane of reality, defeat Captain Marvel, let alone Captain Marvel and the Flash. Speaking of the Flash, in the story Flashpoint Paradox, Barry Allen changed the timeline by going so hard in the Speed Force that he time traveled back in time to save his mother's life altering reality. Now, in this new reality, Aquaman has an affair with Wonder Woman, who goes all Glenn Close from Fatal Instinct or Fatal Attraction or whatever. Google Glenn Close and her movies with uh, Michael Douglas. Uh, and she fucking kills Queen Mira, which sparks a war between Atlantis and the surface which Atlantis is winning. So this guy... I'll stay here with the Wonder Twins and keep an eye on the trouble alert. There's nothing else I can do. Almost took over the world. Are you fucking serious? Up until this point, the motif for uh, Aquaman's ultimate badassery 
has been that it has always taken place in an alternate reality. See? Not even the writers can believe this guy can be anything other than this guy. Okay, back to the present. Jason Momoa has been cast to play Aquaman uh, in these new DC movies. Now, in case you don't know who he is by name, Jason Momoa played Call Drogo in the Game of Thrones TV show. By the way, Game of Thrones, you can either read the books or watch the show. Can't do both. I read the books, so to me, the show is a total fucking turd uh, after the events in season one. Anyway, maybe I'll do a video about that later, but whatever. Momoa also played Conan the Barbarian in the 2011 remake. So they got a dude known for barbarian style roles to play this guy. Something's happening to my mind. Another shameless attempt to give Aquaman some more false badassery. I hate the tattoos of uh, scales or tribal bullshit or whatever he has. Um, I'd have been more comfortable with them giving him like CGI scales or something. But I guess the tattoos make him look edgier and more like a badass, even though he's really just this guy. Computer nuclear power source will overload in 10 minutes. I repeat, nuclear power source will overload in 10 minutes. Now, out of all my complaining, Momoa may do a fantastic job of acting and really nail the role. But just as in the case with skinny ass Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, I can't buy this character transformation because it's, it's, it's far too different from the original character. Any blonde pretty boy could have played the role of Arthur Curry. And I'd be like, mm, all right. Um, you know, that'll be okay. Uh, because at least despite his aggressive non-canon Aquaman barbarian behavior, he'd resemble the Aquaman that we grew to love making fun of in the 80s. But this dramatically different character behavior and aesthetics make this portrayal of Aquaman impossible in my mind. So if we're going to take him and make him underwater Scorpion Conan, we should have done it in the 80s and gotten the original Conan himself. Yeah, yeah, who dodged the dinosaur who's trying to bite me in the water. Yeah, and I was spinning, I would throw the dinosaur against the wall. And Aquaman, yeah, well, the dinosaur hit me. I was hitting back with a large block. Yeah, it's that. Yeah, and the dinosaur turns into a girl. Yeah, I'm Aquaman. Yeah, yeah, you water tricks don't hurt me. Yeah, you, yeah, I don't like seagulls. Yeah, yeah, but I don't like purple fish people even more. Yeah, don't push me, woman. Yeah, yeah, I've got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah I will. Yeah, I, I will fight the fish people. Look at my, look at, look at my physique. Yeah, if you will cut the fish in half. Yeah, now I know karate because I'm Aquaman. Yeah, yeah, yeah you lose. I, yeah, yeah. What is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. 